is inspired by what happened in Paris? Yeah, we're always trying to make sure we, we have a, a safe environment. And so we, in light of all the things that's going around around the world, we had a meeting this morning with, with Chief Stone and his team. And uh, we've talked about this in the past, just haven't gotten to the point to implement it. And this is certainly the appropriate time to do that. So uh, we do need your help. As Jerry said earlier, uh, obviously this is pretty quick. Uh, and we have a certain culture uh, with our fans relative to what we've allowed them to bring in the past. Uh, we really need your help to get the word out when you have 108,000 people and uh, a good core of them are, are fans we can get directly to, uh, but there are a lot that, uh, that we can't get to. And so we, we really need your help through all your different uh, communication platforms to, to let our fans know about this new policy so they don't encounter any challenges uh, when they come to the stadium. So. talked to a security expert today who's saying that stadiums like Ohio Stadium of that size should begin to start looking at either wanding or metal detectors. Do you think we're up to that point now? What's your feeling about implementing something like that? Well, I'll turn that over to Chief Stone. So we're, we're from my perspective as, as your athletic administrator, we're always looking at different things that we might, might need to do. Uh, we've stayed away from that in the past. Uh, as you know, the NA, NA, uh, NHL last year uh, implemented that policy and so we looked at it a little bit and look at the size of our stadium and what it would take to do we just haven't moved to that point but I, but I would think that that's something we have to always think about and talk about but I'll let Chief. We use a multi-layered multi approach to security we utilize uh, private security we also use additional athletics department personnel and public safety personnel to ensure the safety of uh, the fans that are entering and uh, and entering the stadium and also in the uh, parking lots as well, tailg tailgating. What's your level of concern about explosives coming into the stadium? What can you do for that? Well, we, we are increasing measures, and this new bag policy is one that will make uh, the fans more safe. Uh, far left, uh, Clark. What uh, measures are being taken on the approaches to the stadium? Uh, streets, uh, you mentioned parking lots, but those areas where there'll be vehicular traffic primarily as opposed to um, pedestrian traffic or crowds. We set up a buffer zone, so there won't be any large vehicles entering into that buffer zone uh, larger than the size of a van. Uh, any vehicles entering after the buffer, buffer zone is set up is only by approval, pre-approval, and those vehicles are still checked and swept for bombs. Um, <clears throat> where will that buff buffer zone be? Can you describe the location, the area, the borders? I uh, prefer not to describe those particular locations. Thank you. Uh, Bill in the back middle. Gene, uh, flying back from Chicago, there are a lot more restrictions than there were Friday morning. No books in the seat pocket. Can't, can't go to the bathroom until some the person who's in there takes a seat. I assume it's going to be every airline. Was all this stepped up directly after Paris? Because was this going to be, it seems like this is a, you know, a reaction to what happened. Right? Yeah, I think it's going to be a way of life. You know, we, we all can go back to 9-11 and, and what uh, occurred to all of us uh, with TSA traveling and going to, to your comments. And I think uh, uh, going to the question over here, which kind of ties, I think uh, as we move forward, we'll continue to look at other things that we may implement. Um, so yeah, I think that this is a direct result of what's going on around the world. Uh, we're trying to respond to that uh, and make sure we add additional measures beyond what Chief Stone and their team do, does. But yeah, I think this is uh, uh, the beginning of, of different changes that you'll see down the road. The buffer zones too, it's always kind of, so much is dedicated to keeping people from bringing stuff in. But, you know, there's, like at a Browns game, there's thousands of people lined right. up to go through the security. That's right. Uh, so that's to try to deal with that. Yeah, we'll we'll do our best with that, and, and uh, you know, it's, this is a, this is an effort that requires everyone's uh, help. This is not just on public safety, not on athletics. This is on the customer as well, the fan as well. We need you to, if you see something, say something. And so I think as we progress over time, Bill, you're exactly right. Um, our challenge with uh, the earlier question that, that ties a little bit to what you said about going to wands at the entrances or going to the metal detectors like they have in the NHL, you know, we're slightly larger. 
than the Cleveland Browns Stadium. We're slightly larger than Nationwide Arena. You know, 108,000 people. And if you look back to our, 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 our last game at home, um, I know Mike Penner's here. He can probably give you the exact numbers. But because of the game that was on television, um, that they were watching in the parking lot, the number of people that we had to bring into a, the stadium in that short window of time was the largest number of people we ever brought into the shoe in that short window of time because everybody's watching that game come to an end. And then they rushed the gates. And so uh, people were thinking we're having a late arriving crowd. Well, actually, the crowd was there. They just weren't inside yet. So, you know, we have some challenges and, and, and we'll continue to learn and, and implement new things as we move forward. But uh, we, we do need to implement this policy now. And this will be helpful in a big way. It'll help all of our people at the gates. Right. Uh, Steve, go ahead, back row middle. Gene, as a follow to that, you're going to have the same situation this week, I think, with Penn State and Michigan playing right before. Have you guys ever yeah. given thought to avert that, to announce to everyone, come inside, watch the previous game on our big screen up to the point where it's time for our game to start? Obviously. Good idea. We'll list that as an idea, Steve. No, we have not. Uh, but we do know one of the things, to your point, that's funny, you, you mentioned announce. Because uh, one of the things we learned from the uh, Buckeye Fest concert that we're trying to install for next year is, is speakers outside of the stadium. If you remember, we had the weather issue on Sunday uh, with, with the Buckeye Fest, and, and uh, we had no way to communicate with people in the parking lot. The gates are going to open earlier, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to implement speaker system throughout our parking lots. But uh, to your point, that's something we'll keep in mind. Great idea. We'll go a couple more questions, and then we'll break it up. Uh, second row left, Lori. Gene, the uh, release says that this is the policy for Saturday. Do we know if this is the policy beyond Saturday? Probably will be. You know, when we started this morning talking about and thinking about this through a series of conversations, uh, we felt that this was, because we talked about it before, this is the right time to do it because of where we are in our world. But also, uh, it, we'd probably be able to keep it going in the future. Uh, because we're implementing it now. So we need to begin to socialize this with our fans, teach our fans, get them prepared for it. Frankly, a lot of our fans are used to it because if you followed us to a bowl game, you, 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 this is what you dealt with. And so uh, for a good portion of them, it won't be new. If you went to the team up north and you went to their stadium or you went to the Michigan State Stadium or Penn State Stadium, you encountered this. So uh, we're a little bit behind in this regard. So yes, I think this will be what we'll continue to implement in the future. Uh, far left again, Clark. Should Last people, should people uh, plan on maybe arriving early? Will they take that a little bit longer I to get everybody you. in? You're taking care of my closing statement. The, the, you know, the, the, the earlier you come, the better. Uh, we're going to pay, uh, uh, I really should turn this over to Chief Stone, we're going to pay a lot more due diligence to, at the gate. Uh, so it might take you a little bit longer to get in. Uh, so the earlier you come, the better. Um, and, and so we would encourage people to, when gates open, come on in. Chief, I don't know if you want to comment on that or not. I just like to make the point that we take security here very serious. We work with local, county, state, and federal public safety partners to accomplish the mission. And that is a good point. I would encourage uh, the fans to come early and adhere to the new bag policy. And uh, we'll get them in smoothly and have a family fun event and go Bucks. personnel uh, standpoint, how many more personnel will be involved from a security standpoint and uh, what will be the increase in cost just in providing that new level of uh, security? You will see an increased presence of uniform personnel and canine units and there will be other assets that you may not readily see. Uh, we'll worry about the cost later. Uh, just, just for you guys, though, logistically, how many more people will be involved just in a round terms? Uh, that number I'm not going to disclose. Thank you.